Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you doing? I hope you're having a really good day. Um, so today's video, we are doing a q and I'm just pulling hair out of my hairbrush. Um, and yeah, I just thought I would curl my hair at the same time. It's Saturday today and um, I didn't have time to do it this morning. So I thought if I do it now, it will make it look a little bit nicer for the next couple of days. Um, yes, yeah, so I asked you for some questions over on my Instagram account, um, and I asked for questions about anything and everything, um, and also some assumptions, so people could submit questions or assumptions about me. Um, I think we've only got one assumption, or maybe even none, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into it i'm hoping the lighting's okay it is the evening here so um yeah apologies but i thought it's not like need it's not like you're looking at my makeup or anything like that so should be fine um but yeah let's crack on um first question i thought keep it super relevant it is what made you want to start a youtube channel um so essentially I've been watching YouTube now for a few years. Um, I'm a very nosy person and I've always just been, I just find people fascinating, like what they do with their lives and just who they are and all of that. Um, so that's part of it. Um, and also I do just love creating content. So um, I work within marketing and social media and so yeah it kind of just ties in and you know that's why i also like um kind of sh uh, run my instagram account as well because yeah i love putting content together um and i just kind of thought why not like i really would recommend it to anyone because you know i think i was really really worried about what people would think that people would think it was like really cringy and like i'm sure lots of people do but like life is just too short um to care and yeah, I thought if I can make something of it, um, it's already something that I enjoy. Like, you know, at the moment I am enjoying doing it, um, even though I'm not making any money. Um, and yeah, obviously the hope is that I, I will make a little bit of money from it. Um, that would be amazing. So yeah, um, we will see where it goes. And I just think um, it's, I think I'm realizing more and more that um, I, you know, I need to be creative to be happy and I need to, I've always been like a very expressive person and kind of shared my thoughts and feelings on anything and everything. And I've done that for a while on my Instagram. Um, but I think, yeah, I do just, um, it just kind of, I think is good for my soul to be able to express myself by, you know, sharing stuff about fashion and stuff about myself and um, I know that's not for everyone but you know I personally like I say I'm very nosy and I just find human beings just inspiring so I guess my hope is that kind of other people can think I'm inspiring as well I don't know but I would say that if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel then go for it literally like you've got nothing to lose it you know I'm not gonna lie it it is a lot of hard work it is more con more time consuming than even I thought and I you know I know just from working in marketing that creating content always takes longer than you think it's going to um but yeah I would say it's worth it if you feel drawn to it go for it um so next question do you miss life coaching so um if you haven't been like following me on instagram for a while then you won't know that I was a life coach um, not for ages I did it for about two years um, and I kind of quit it a few months ago it was in line with when I decided to start on YouTube because obviously I ha then have more time um, no I I don't I don't miss it I miss um, I miss like I think it was really needed for me at the time like the community that came with it and feeling like I had found my people who, you know, uh, life coaches, I guess, you know, when you become a life coach, you, you want, it's because I guess you have seen the value and want to improve your life in any way you can and you want to help 
do that for other people and it honestly was great to be surrounded by like-minded people and I still am um, I'm still you know friends with the people that I met on my coaching journey um yeah and obviously helping people um to like feel confident in themselves and like you know work out the next move and things like it was you know it was really fulfilling but um for me the sort of time that I ended up putting into it um was kind of yeah didn't outweigh financially I think it's great that people are really passionate about things and they're they're willing to do it for free but I think doing something for free long term when there's no financial gain like it is a strain basically um what way around am I doing this um so yeah I I miss elements of it but like in terms of like I don't I don't regret um leaving you know I gave it a go and yeah it was the right time and I think I, at the time, I, I think I felt like I would, I'd sort of heal, when I became a life coach, I think I'd felt like I sort of had healed a lot of things and I therefore was in a space to be able to help other people. Um, and I, you know, I know that I was and I know that I, I really did help, help people. Um, but I think now I'm in a different place where there's other things I'm trying to heal and therefore it kind of stop, also stops sort of feeling authentic um, to like, you know, me helping people. So my niche was like a quarter life crisis, me helping people with their quarter life crisis when I'm still trying to sort through my own stuff. Not a quarter life crisis, but just I've moved on to other stuff now. Basically, um, do I miss it? Uh, no, not to do uh, for a business. Um, next question, have you always been into fashion? Yes, I have, yeah, um, I don't know, like, what age you become aware of fashion, but yeah, like, since I can remember, yeah, um, I know that, like, at school and stuff, like, I would always dress really differently to my friends, um, it's funny because now I don't see my fashion sense as being different, I feel like now pretty much everyone is into fashion and I think what I used to wear that I think would be like outside of the box now isn't like I I I don't know whether my fashion sense has got like more boring as I've got older or if everyone else has got less boring um I think fashion is just so much more and style is so much more easily like accessible now so I know like say when I was a teenager I would like go into Topshop and be able to put outfits together with my eyes and like know what was going to look good and I that's definitely like a skill like not everyone has that but I think more people have been able to develop that skill with things like social media like obviously everyone pretty much everyone kind of shares like you know what they wear on a semi-regular basis and I think it's like it's really good like people who weren't necessarily into fashion now can like see how to put looks together and get just get like constant inspiration and I think you know like when I was when I started to get into fashion like um fast fashion brands didn't exist and like you know have like lookbooks and stuff and like trends I don't know yeah um what was the actual question I've forgotten have you always been into fashion yeah I have um yeah I I find if I like had to wear, I remember like, I remember at school when like, it felt like all the girls were just wearing jeans and a black top. And honestly, like that would have like killed my soul to do that. And I know that sounds really dramatic, but I also know that if you're into fashion, then you'll get that. Like for me, it's literally like a way to express myself. And yes, like some days I do just wear like joggers and a t-shirt. Like I'm not saying that I'm like really expressive every day, but like, it is part of what makes me feel like me. And I have known that from a very young age. Like I've always been drawn, I was just always drawn to like, well, yeah, what, what was in fashion, not what people around me were wearing um, so that I could fit in. Um, and I know that means that I definitely have always been into fashion because 
I also was someone who like really cared what people thought about me and wanted to fit in, but like I just couldn't let my soul die and just fit in when it came to fashion. I feel like that got really deep, but um, yeah. Um, so next, yeah, this is more of an assumption. So um, you wish you weren't so sensitive. So um, if you have followed me, I feel like I've got a very straight bit here. If you follow me on social media for a while, I before I even started life coaching, I would talk quite a bit about like my mental health and things I struggle with and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously, as part of coaching and like spirituality, which I'm also into, I kind of, yeah, if you've been following me for a while, then you'll know that I definitely um, would describe myself as a highly sensitive person, as a very empathic person. Um, and I've definitely spoken about the Kind of loads of that um basically in short to answer this question yeah i do wish i wasn't as sensitive and i really did hope that like by this age i would be more don't get me wrong like i'm definitely way more accepting of it than i used to be um you know i've learned that i am someone who needs to put boundaries out there because when you are a sensitive person when you're an empath you will attract they call them like energy vampires <laughs> you will attract people who are in need of help and it's because you're a caring person and they sense that within you and they sense that you're good at like giving advice and that you're very understanding to how they're feeling but actually being highly sensitive yeah it means that you can um like understand the emotions of everyone else and like really empathize but which is good for them but it's not good for you when someone's going through a shit time and you literally, it's like your body starts to think that you're living their experience. So like, for me, like this is a really small example, but like, um, if say I'm in a room with a few people and one of them is like annoyed or in a bad mood, I can just sense it. And I just, them and then really on edge with that person being there. And then for the rest of the day, that will affect me. Whereas I feel like everyone else in the room is like, well, that person's them, like, whatever, or doesn't even notice it. Like, I'm so, um, I am so observant, and I feel like, not that I'm like a mind reader or anything, but I just, yeah, I just know, I just pick up on everything, um, and that is hard. But there are also gifts with being sensitive, as I've been told my whole life and struggle to find, but yeah, it does mean that, at the end of the day, I think I'm a really nice, understanding, caring, non-judgmental person. And that is a really good trait to have. And I think as long as you're also sensitive, you know, you will start to work out what your boundaries are, when to say no, um, you know, who you can be around for long periods of time and who you can't and, you know, all of these things. Um, yeah, I do wish I wasn't as sensitive, um, but that's me and there, there we go. Um, next question. How do you stay so confident with your psoriasis? Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm really confident with my psoriasis. I know I, I know I kind of share things online and things occasionally. I think a lot of that well, the, the main reason is to raise awareness and to make other people with psoriasis feel less shit. Like, if I can do that for someone, then that's great. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't take that as me being like really confident. Like, I hid psoriasis from Mark for the first year of our relationship. And I know you might think, well, how can you do that? Well, I would use my sun lamp, like, every single day and yeah like I it you know you can't ever get rid of it completely in the sense that like there are dry patches and things like that um so he probably knew that like something was up but um yeah I would wear I, I would use some beds and wear fake tan um yeah for the whole first year of our relationship he literally had no idea what my real skin color was um yeah, and obviously, like, we didn't live together or anything, so we didn't see each other every day. Um, so it was kind of easy to, like, do the maintenance and stuff when, on days that I wasn't seeing him. Um, and he also went, he also 
lived um, in Canada for the like second six months of our relationship, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, I guess it was only really six months where I was like really strict and like, anyway, yeah. Um, so obviously, yes, I am more confident with it. A lot of that, and I feel, I hate it that this is even a thing. A lot of that is that I am in long-term relationship. Um, if I was single, it would be a different story. And, you know, I know that, I was gonna say, I feel ashamed to say that, but like, I don't, because at the end of the day, like that's reality. And I know that a lot of women would feel the same, but like, yeah, if I was single and going on dates and stuff and like seeing, seeing someone like, yeah, I'd be like, what are they going to think of my psoriasis? Yeah, and I'm sorry, that's not very, like, female empowerment, is it? But that is how I feel. Um, but yeah, obviously things like using my sun lamp and fake tan, they all help to make me feel more confident. And also, I am aware that my psoriasis could be a hell of a lot worse. So I have gut ache psoriasis. I could have plaque psoriasis where you have, like, big, big patches. Um where the flakes are pretty much impossible to get off and whereas I can scrub mine and they do start coming back literally a second later but like you know you can sort of scrub and moisturize and tan and just yeah try and manage it that way and you know my legs are virtually clear my arms are pretty much clear um my face my face used to be covered my face is now clear my neck so actually like a lot of what people are seeing just like on the street um out and about wouldn't even think that I have psoriasis so that obviously helps a lot and I you know anytime I feel down about it I really do remind myself there are people out there who are literally covered head to toe in really thick plaques um so yeah that's my thoughts on that um how are you do you know what? I'm seeing loads of people um submitting this as a question at the moment on people's instagrams um which I think is really nice um, because obviously not a lot of people say that. I mean, I'm very, I'm very open about how I am and like when I'm struggling and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm actually like, I'm actually doing all right at the moment. I, um, I had Reiki and a reading this morning um, with a lovely lady called Layla at um, a beauty salon um, in Froome. If you're local, then you'll know where that is. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll link um, to her website or her Instagram in the description actually, if you are local, because yeah, she's just really lovely. She's just got this really like warm presence. But anyway, I'm always going off topic. Um, yeah, so um, that actually really um, has kind of helped me to like give me a little bit of a boost and like some guidance on something. Um, yeah, so today, yeah, I'm doing, doing pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, maybe tomorrow I won't feel so good. I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm I'm good at the moment. Thank you, thank you very much. How are you? Let me know in the comments. Um, okay, last question. Oh, what's your favourite item in your, in your wardrobe right now? Someone actually um submitted this question a couple of weeks ago when I said I was going to do a Q and A, but then I didn't. Um, I I did read over these questions beforehand, so. I am prepared. This is my favourite item in my wardrobe right now, which you will have seen in my um, Zara, in my Zara spring summer haul. Obviously, this is very much spring, um, but yeah, I love it. It's like really, I don't know. I feel like Hayley Bieber would wear this, so therefore, I love it. Um, yeah, it's just this pink and green like oversized sweater, and yeah, I love it. It's just nice and baggy and it's so nice to be wearing colour um yeah as we come into spring today actually was pretty warm I mean not warm but like warm for the UK um but yeah anyway um my hair is all curled as you know this will drop very soon but I just like how the ends it just looks less like, rather than like a scarecrow it at least like stays tucked together even if the curl falls out the ends like do this feel like you even know what I mean or you don't but um yeah thank you so so much for watching this Q&A um and assumptions video well this Q&A um yeah and thank you for submitting your questions over on Instagram if you aren't yet following me then please do and um yeah as usual subscribe to my channel if you haven't already 
give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and comment below and I will see you guys on Thursday for Thursday's video.